Well, hello everyone. I am Leslie Hassler. What I do is I do business coaching. So I love to help business owners grow their businesses quickly, uh, sustainably in a way that's about putting more profits in your bank, more time on your calendar so you can get on with the rest of your life. You know, I have yet to meet anybody that uh, is planning on their tombstone reading, I wish I worked more. And so I'm really here to help business owners work a little less, be better at what they're doing, and then be able to uh, reap the rewards of being a small business owner and an entrepreneur. But we are talking about how to create leverage in your small business. And this should be one of the first things people think of when it comes to growing the business is really what leverage points to use. Now I'm going to go over a few things with you today. If you have questions at any point in time, feel free to put them into the chat box. If you are watching us on um, any of our other modes or watching and listening, you can always comment on the blog page on the yourbizrules.com website. But we're going to be talking about a few things. So we're going to talk about who needs to have leverage in their business, um, what that might look like. Uh, we're also going to talk about what leverage is if, for small business and entrepreneurs. Then we're going to dive into the four leverage points that I work on with my clients when we're trying to create the foundation to be able to grow. You know, so often on our weekly lab shows, we're talking about a specific tactic, a specific strategy that you can use to grow. This is really like getting yourself ready to grow. OK, a lot of times when I come in um, and start working with my one to one clients, we have to come into this this area first so that we can position the business to be able to grow. Because a lot of times if uh, I'm kind of getting into that first bullet point, um, let me go back and just let's wrap up what we're going to talk about. So this is going to be four areas of leverage. Um, you can see I'm passionate about it because I'm already wanting to share. <laughs> and then we're going to talk about what's your plan and any questions and answers. So if you have those, feel free to put them into the chat box. We'll be answering them. But let's start off with who needs leverage, you know, and why do you need to find leverage in your business? So if you are with us online, I want to know why you feel like you need leverage. Um, share that with me uh, so that I can make sure that we're covering um, the benefits of, of getting leverage in your business with you as quickly and easily as possible. But really, here's might be some situations that you might be in if you are needing to find leverage. And the first situation is uh, you're reinventing the wheel. You feel like that's all you do is have to redo things, reinvent the wheel, and because of it, you feel like you're spinning. So I, I kind of I said you're reinventing the wheel just um, and your business feels like it's just kind of spinning in place. It's got all this action and all this motion, but no go. <laughs> Um, that is probably a key area for a business that needs leverage. The next thing is if you've been doing it by yourself, you have been the chief cook and bottle washer for a very long time and you are finally tired of it, but you are petrified because you either feel like no one can do what you do. No one can do it as well as you do. And when you have tried to put some leverage points in, into your business, you feel like you really um, got burned or it didn't work out well. Okay. But you're, you're in this kind of position of you can't do more than you are doing anymore, but you got to find a way to get it done. Okay. Another place is, um, this might also look like you haven't taken a vacation in years. And I'm shocked when I talk to people who haven't taken vacations in years, that's a great way to stay at the top of your game and be able to do those things. Um, you're also, you probably have plateaued in growth. And we talked about that uh, just a minute ago. And uh, you also probably want to make sure that your business um, is making money. Okay, so those are going to be the four reasons that we're going to talk about today and what the situation might look like for your business. Now, let's talk about leverage and what leverage is in small business and for entrepreneurs. And if you think about it is a lot of times you can think about um, a wedge or something that you might use to to move a heavy piece of equipment. I mean, that's kind of a leverage or you can think of um, a seesaw. A seesaw is a great example of leverage, right, where you've got a fulcrum point in the center of your seesaw and you're using the potential energy of each person to get motion, all right? Now, when you, um, allergies are horrible here in Texas, guys, so I apologize if I 
um, sniffle here and there. But when you're when you're doing and looking for leverage in your business, you're really looking at you know, doing less with more and then getting more done. The other part that we look at when we're looking at leverage is we want to make sure that you're maximizing your benefits, you're maximizing your results by the most uh, minimal of effort. Okay, now when we talk about these four leverage points, which we're going to go into in a few minutes, that's what we're talking about is using your resources as best as you can to create more resources to be able to grow, to have you move quicker without necessarily working harder. Okay, does that make sense? I know we've got um, just, uh, it looks like a lot of eyeballs, not too many um, people actually active with us today, and that's okay. Um, but when we move into these key areas, it's it's kind of uh, the point in time to where I want you to write down for yourself, you know, really, why do I need leverage? What would leverage do for me? And we've talked about the fact that you're going to be able to work less. We talked about the fact that you'll be able to grow easily. Uh, and it also, you know, that one comment I made about, I know it's talked to so many entrepreneurs that are just scared to let things go because they're afraid of the results or the lack of quality of the results. Using these leverage points that we're about to go through actually uh, mitigate your risks. I love that word, mitigate, mitigate. I love it, love it, love it. But that's part of the job as an entrepreneur is not so much to um, avoid risks because when you avoid risks, you also don't grow, but it's to n acknowledge the risks and mitigate them, all right, so that they have less impact or less ability to come into fruition. Okay, let's get into the four areas of leverage. So these are gonna be the areas that you could easily identify in your business, and I'm gonna highlight them, and then I'll, I'll kind of list for you um, what they are, and I'll also put here in the chat box if you happen to be watching so you can see that. I know sometimes I chat quite quickly, um, and I wanna make sure you get that. But the first ones that we're gonna talk about is people. You know, people is, um, is a great source of leverage in a business. And yeah, I wrote uh, a little blip of this for my newsletter this week, but I just participated or helped volunteered for our school auction. Now I co-chaired it last year. Um, so I wanted to support the co-chairs this year in helping make, make sure that it does everything that it needs to do for our school. Well, the, the bonus I suppose was, is that while I had growth, coming into it. And I picked up the auction two months before it was supposed to happen. Um, we had growth over the prior year. This new group of auction committee actually had tremendous growth on top of what we grew last year. And part of the reason that they were able to have the growth is there were so many more people involved. So they could take all of these jobs that we didn't have time to do last year and actually assign them to other people and get volunteers to take care of the coordination of this so that they could get a bigger auction. Now, this works for your business as well when people is you will need people in order to grow. You know, I often share this quote from a friend of mine, Bridget Chambers, is gone are the days you can be successful in a silo. As a small business owner, just because you own the business doesn't mean you have to do it all yourself. So you really have to get people and leverage people. Um, I would put, went ahead and put the people uh, details up in the chat box so you can see them there. The next point is money. Now this is huge. If you've got, if you're one of these people that are looking at their business and saying, I cannot grow because I do not have money to grow and there's no way that I'm going to get it. And if I don't have money in my bank, it can't happen. You're going to, listen in when we start to talk about money. The third element is technology. I love technology. I, I am not afraid to try any new technology. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But there's a couple of things we'll talk about there. We'll talk about the cost and we'll talk about the benefits. Because yes, technology costs money. Um, the last one that we'll talk about is systems. And systems and processes is kind of one of those corner pillars of uh, the Your Biz Rules business coaching. And we're going to talk about why that is and how simple it really can be. You don't need something complex. In fact, in fact complexity is kind of the antithesis of success. We, we have to uh, model things by the KISS method. So they keep it simple, silly um, method. So let's talk about people. 
So people, now I mentioned to you the auction story and I shared that and that was like employees, if you think about it. And that internal team is definitely a way of leveraging people. Now, for a lot of people, I've had staff in the past. I actually choose not to have staff um, currently, but I have to have people, right? So there's, there's this kind of um, mentality that you can get. So you can have your internal team, but if you're not going to have your internal team, then you have to have your outsource team. And I just brought on a, a new content kind of manager for our company, and we were talking about this. She's like, I have to have a my own outsource team to be able to get done everything that we need to get done for clients. But at the same time, I don't want employees. So you need to realize that you have to have people somehow. But it doesn't have to be that traditional corporate mentality of employees per se. There are a lot of small businesses out of here. And I mean, there's well over 75 million out in the United States alone that can help you grow your business. If you are too busy doing all things in your business, you will never have time to grow. And it will take anything might take you 10 times longer. So. People really is that that element that you need to, to kind of get into place. And when we talk about these first two segments of outsourcing and internal team, I want you to think about um, project management. And project management is part of my background, part of my um, career in corporate. And if you think about it, there's a... Um, there's something called the waterfall effect. So where you have to do task A before you can do task B before you can do task C. And if you see me, if you're watching the blab, you can see my hand kind of doing the stair step down. All right. Now, what you can do in a business with having um, more team to either outsource to or delegate to is you can get multiples of those. So it might take you, I don't know, three weeks to do. If you leverage those people, could take you one week. And if you can chunk things up in a way that you can delegate them out easily, then you get back time. Now, for as quickly as our world is moving, time is money, right? Time is, is everything about getting to market, taking advantage of a new opportunity, um, getting stuff done. It's just a matter of using that resource and seeing that people can be a resource in your business in the right way for your attitude, your philosophy, and your business and your clients. Completely customize it, but you've got to use those two. So what I, why I start there is this tends to be the number one area people avoid. And it doesn't work. So as an example, I have a, a new client that came on two months ago, a landscaping business. And it is my client and her crew. That's it. So my client is responsible for all communication, which she has some 20 um, maintenance clients as far as landscaping. All communication, all ordering, all scheduling, all payroll, all you know, sales, all walking the job with her guys. I mean, her bucket is full. And she has reached the point to where she can't grow her business anymore. Plus, on top of that, it's affected her health. So the first thing that we're working on is really building her internal team. She doesn't need a whole lot, but she does need somebody. So take a look at that. You can get by by yourself for a long time. I'm not going to say that you can't, but you're not going to be able to get where you could potentially be without using people. Now, this next one I want to talk to you about, partners and strategic alliances. This is huge. Uh, this is one way where you start to connect to other people's networks. Okay, now most people um, think about networking and use networking, but they don't always see it for the value that it is. And too, too many times what I see business owners doing is walking into some sort of networking event looking for a client. Networking isn't necessarily about finding the client per se as much as finding the gateway to the client. Does that make sense? So I love using the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I don't know if you've ever played that game with somebody. I can't because I can't remember actors' names. But <laughs> um, if you think about the six degrees of Kevin Bacon, right, it's you You try to connect to Kevin Bacon in six movies um, with six actors in order to say who's who starred with Kevin Bacon. 
That is really a better concept, a people leverage concept to use in your business. So if you think about there's an ideal client that you have, you can always, by all means, go chase that single ideal client. However, you can chase the people who are already connected to your ideal client and are in such alignment with your business and how you do business and the people that you serve, that not only do they have one of your ideal client, they have 20, okay? That's how you work smarter. You're, you're leveraging something that somebody's already done, a network that somebody's already built in a win-win situation. So the, I always say that. It's like you have to do everything with ethics in your business, and you always have to do it either in a pay it forward or win-win-win. Um, type of a situation. So don't just ask if you can't give. Um, and never in, in those situations, especially partners in strategic alliances, it's not always great to ask. Sometimes the situation is prime for you asking first, but you must have that win-win situation um, because people don't want their networks burned either. So you got to keep those things in mind. And then the fourth way of leveraging people and this is almost leveraging your clients um, but it does bleed over into networking is really about referrals so when somebody else is singing your praises it does a couple of things for you one it is um a more trusted source than if you sing your own praises so i could say one thing about what i do for my clients and you could hear me and go okay that's nice and then my client, because they're a third party, could say the exact same thing about me and more people find her credible, right? You, We expect you to have self-promotion, but we also know that it's not um, always in somebody else's realm that they have to say anything. So if they do say something, that is fabulous. So referrals are really a huge leverage point. Um, if I just kind of went back to the seven figures that we talked about at the beginning of the year, there's that cost of acquisition number. That is the cost of your marketing to actually um, bring somebody in. So how much if you took your entire marketing budget for the year and you divided by your entire new clients, that number is the cost of acquisition. So if you spend $200, let's say, to acquire a new client and that client refers three people to you and maybe you thank them for each each of those, but maybe you're, if you had a monetary um, assignment to your to a gift or something like that, maybe you were at $100 for those three people. So suddenly you may be like 300 and gave you four clients. So now your cost of acquisition has gone down. So you're leveraging money. It's kind of one of these bleed ones. But it's a really important thing to realize that when you don't promote referrals, when you don't ask for referrals from your clients and from your associates, you are wasting money. You are leaving dollars on the table that were there for you to pick up. It's not like you had to scrounge for them. It's not like you had to beg for them. It's like it was a buffet that had been served to you and you walked on by. All right. That's really um, one, an important part to think about when it comes to uh, leveraging people. All right. So we're going to move on to our second point of leverage. And I'm going to go ahead and pop, copy and paste this into our chat box. But our second point of leverage is all about money. And I love talking about this because the number one thing that I will hear is we don't have any money. And I have a client that will tell you, uh, it's actually a medical wellness office, that we've been working together for six months. And in that six months, they've seen a 235% growth in their business. Hello, who wouldn't want that? And what's really entertaining is they haven't had to spend money to necessarily do that. Okay, so there are some smart ways to be able to grow your, your business without money. They will work internally, but they will not work forever. So you need to understand that at some point in time, you will need to make an investment. But let's go through really the money concept and how we might be able to get money in our business and in order to grow. So the first one that I have is the get paid to build it kind of concept. And that really is where you pre-sell your product or your services or a class or fill in the blank in order to gain funds and then fulfill on it. 
So again, if you're um, not always good at follow through, if you are great at all the talk, but you can't walk the walk, don't try this. Um, but if you think about it, this is really kind of where Kickstarter come in, right? You're pre-purchasing a benefit from a company, a t-shirt, uh, a prototype, you know, whatever it might be in exchange for investing in the company. Okay, we had um, Jenny Kassan was on, I think about a month or two ago that talked all about really finding investor funding and what you need to have and, and what that is. But that's kind of the concept, right? Where you've got that great idea, that great concept, but you need money in order to build it. So you use this kind of get paid to build it mindset to be able to do that. There's the next one that talks about is really where you invest money to get more time. And I, I always talk about uh, the worker and the entrepreneur. So the workers are chief cook and bottle washer in the business, but the entrepreneur is somebody that feels their values lies more in growing the business. Well, and when it comes to money, a worker's always going to want to save, always want to get save. Okay. When it comes to an entrepreneur, they're looking for opportunities to invest. They give them a return on investment. So when you leverage money to grow your business, you can also leverage money to give you more time so that you can go out and do what you do best. OK, now, as an entrepreneur, you should be like selling, selling your services, finding your clients and servicing your clients. Right. If it's not one of those three things or if you don't have time to do those three things, you need to use this leverage point in order to get the time to do so. Then we'll talk about standing on the shoulders of giants. Listen, there are so many people who have been there and done that and have the t-shirt and will happily give you or sell you a t-shirt. Okay. If you think about this, and this is how I attack problems in my own business. And of course, as a coach, I strongly believe in investing on the shoulders of giants and finding that expert that can help you grow your business. But if you look at this kind of standing on the shoulders of giants concept is, can I learn something? Can you learn something? Yes, you can learn it. You can learn it for sure. How long will it take you to learn? Like to be an expert at something. Okay, let me, I'll give you two examples. One of me, just me personally, I love to share. I'm, I'm, I'm human. Um, one of me where I have been trying to learn something and I've been trying to learn probably for the last two years would be a Facebook advertising. OK, I have decided I am not the person that needs to learn that kind of environment. Right. Because it's taking me too long. It's not giving me the results that I need. So if that truly isn't a goal in my business, then I need to probably invest in standing on the sh shoulders of giants who are good at it. In fact, I have a, already have a conversation. Right. I mentioned that I've just recently brought on a content manager. Why did I bring her on? Because she is an expert at it and she can do it quicker than I can. And I need time to be able to go do other things. OK, so you can shortcut the, the length of time that it will take to get the growth and the results in your business. But you have to be willing to make investments to get that shortcut of time and to get your results quicker. Like I said, you can learn anything. Yeah, better late than never. That's right. We all learn. Um, Barbara just shared with us. We all learn. Um, and this is a thing that I do really well and not so well at times. But you really just, you know, when you when it makes sense to stand on the shoulder of giants, it makes sense to stand on the shoulder of giants. Um, OK, the next one is all about we're talking about money leverage points here. We're talking about actually Four leverage points you, you can use in your business. The first one being people, second one being money. And the last two really talk about um, making money while you sleep, if you will, is one way to look at it. There's the one way is about creating multiple streams of income. Now, this can be done with service levels. It can be done with products, info products. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can be great at an accountant and be a fabulous accountant. And then you could also say, well, I have a successful firm. I've been in accounting and I've had my own business for 25 years. And you could do a consultancy where you're helping other accounting firms 
um, improve their success. So that might be two different forms of stream of income. You know, we were talking about speaking last week with our guest, Kim Tracy of the Maxwell James Agency. Guess what? Speaking is a, another stream of income. Okay, so there are ways to diversify your your business in, um, in in smart ways, and you're leveraging the same talent. So, for instance, let me give you another instance here. You can also take it a little more micro if you if you want to. So, my client that is landscaping, she's a horticulturalist. We're looking at diversifying her business. Why do we want to diversify her business? We want to diversify to be make a recession proof business. OK, in order to do that, we can't put all of our eggs in one bucket. So she has a very strong residential business. But now we want a commercial business. We want a governmental business. We want other pockets that should one have a slight downturn. There'll be more ways to support the business. OK, that's part of this multiple streams of, of income. The last one is really about creating passive income. And this is the making money while you sleep. OK, I just was shaking my head like it was a bad thing. It's actually a good thing. But this is why a lot of people make books to sell. This is why a lot of people have info, info products. We're going to kind of move on to the third leverage point is we're talking about how to create leverage in your small business. And that really is the leverage point of technology. Now, I, um, I happen to be one of those people that's not afraid of technology, but I know there can be a lot of fear around technology. What I'm looking for when you're looking to create leverage in the realm of technology is we want to automate anything that's repetitive, uh, anything where there's a software solution existing that could fulfill our need and make kind of take us out of having to manage it. This helps increase ease, it helps free up time, and it also helps us do our work better. So a couple of examples here. Um, one, my favorite, is that scheduling of a meeting. Excuse me, scheduling of a meeting. Well, we all know how many emails can go back and forth, how many missed calls, what about this time, what about that time? I love my scheduler. I sent one out to a client today. I said, all right, you need to schedule your next session with me. Here's my scheduler. You find the time that best suits you, and we don't have to go back and forth. That's just one example. Um, another one, you know, we use Infusionsoft. You could think about MailChimp. You could think about a Weber constant contact. That is technology that automates. If you're using Hootsuite, if you're using, um, is it Buffer or Social Oom for any of the other kind of social media um, publishing tools, those are technology that increase automation. Does it make sense? So technology is one of those points that you need to be very smart with because technology itself, any kind of investment in technology has an investment, a time investment, not just a money investment that you probably need to put in a good 80, 100 hours to become proficient and be able to get 30% of the use out of that technology. So, you know, keep those things in mind. But we, we want things that make things easier, make it easier for our clients, easier for our staff, easier for us, something that enables us to be able to do um, more work with less time. And that's what technology will do for you. Now, the last one is about systems. And this, if you can think of it, the whole idea around systems, which is our last point of, of leverage, um, is that systems are repeatable. Systems show where things can be are too complex and why, you know, it kind of gets maybe the flow of your business gets stuck somewhere. Usually it's around complexity. Um, if you're looking at systems and processes, what I think people have a misconception on is they think it has to be really hard or really detailed and it has to look perfect and it has to be able to do all these things. I have found that when things are perfect, people don't want to improve them. Um, it was one of the concepts of why we tried to show things in pencil and when I had my design business versus pen, if they were able to make changes. If they weren't earned, able to make changes. We showed it in like computer printout, line drawn type of thing, because there's a different connotation for people. So when you're looking at systems, what you're trying to do is build it once to get paid forever. Now, 
how I use systems in my own personal business. I'll talk about my personal business and how we do it in my clients businesses so you can see the difference. But how I might do it in my business is, um, for instance, this whole back end process that goes around blabs and audio and all of those things, I don't want to do anymore. Yay! So my VA helps out. My VA, Amy, who's on the show with us a lot, helps out with that. How she knows what to do and how I want it to be done is that I created a screenshot kind of document that stepped her through step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this. And I sent it over to her. We didn't even need to have a meeting. Okay. It was, it's kind of that simple. And that's what system and processes do for you. Now, what you could use system and process to do is at, if you're on the fence about, oh, I need to hire or I need to outsource. If you document that, you know, in just a form of screenshots or a little bit of text, visual always works, video, if that's your, what you like to do, when you start to document this, you start to be able to shift things off and delegate, okay? You start to be able not to be in the office and still have a guidebook of what's supposed to go on. Now, the systems can be as big as they need to be, as small as they need to be, but they do need to have systems. And it also starts to show you the hierarchy of your company and who needs to be doing what. Because you don't really want to send a $10 job, let's say $10 an hour job filing, to a $45 an hour employee, do you? You'd rather be able to match the skills with the investment that's needed to do that. So you have to build the systems into place so that you can A, free up your time, B, do what you need to do best, take vacations, um, hire staff, and have good communication. Um, I have a client right now that we're actually looking to implement a payroll system. Now, while she can do payroll right now, and it doesn't really take her a huge amount of time, maybe an hour a week, um, plus a little bit extra, so maybe two hours, what it is is that's still five or six hours a month, okay? If we're going to suddenly double her staff over the next 18 months, what is that going to do to her time? See, we have that goal of doubling the business, right? And as part of the plan, we look and say, well, what does that mean? What does it mean to double our staff? Well, that means you're going to double your payroll to a certain extent, right? So we want to put a system in place that can grow with her, okay? So we used a third-party payroll specialist who is going to then take care of all of that, the administrative part of it, so that she can go on and do what she needs to do. Because honestly, if we're going to double her staff, she needs to go double her sales, right? So when you look at systems in this respect, it's kind of the, the, the foundations that shore up. It's actually one of the seven pillars in the Your Business Rules business coaching formula that is about getting a good foundation in place in your business so that you can do whatever you need to do or want to do in your business, whether you want to be comfortable and stay where you're at, or you want to be able to grow. Um, so those are the kind of systems that we, we might put into place. But this could be anything from payroll. It can be how you want the phone answered. I um, Even in my first business, we had, here's your day. Here's when I expect things to get done. You know, if you have phone calls, I don't want you to wait till 3 o'clock to place the phone calls. I want you placing those at 9 in the morning so that we're more likely to get back a response. You can think that far through and make sure that you've got the elements that you need. So it's all about, at the end of it, is what's going to be your plan? You know, what are the leverage points that you can use in your business today to get the growth that you're looking for? And it's that high, that next level of strategy, if you will, of saying, I've set these nice fun goals out for me. Now I have to make sure that I'm leveraging and that I'm using things to the fullest. Um, I kind of, I know I, on my website, I have an article about this, about leveraging marketing content, you know, so you're doing it once and you're using it a million places and that you're getting all the legs from it that you can. If that's what you need to do first, then focus on that element first and then bring in these other layers of, of uh, leverage point. If you're just starting in business and you need to get some cash going, 
focus on people, focus on those partners and strategic partnerships. If you can make the investment into a coach or an expert who can help you make the investment, you're short cut cutting time and getting results sooner. That's going to be all for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining us.